Only two tables remain as 18 players battle for their seat at the main event final table. And only one knows how to get there. <laughs> Scotty, Scotty Wynn. The prince, baby. Scotty Wynn has been there once. He bought a dream, just one one. I have a chance to do a second time. Will he book his return trip to the final table? When I come out, I play for first. I don't think about second. Tonight, 17 others try to stop him. This is all mine this year. The quest for the final table continues. Everybody and welcome to the World Series of Poker presented by Milwaukee's Best Light. Along with Norman Chad, I'm Lon McCarran. We begin with just two tables, 18 players who will play down to our final nine and earn a seat at the main event final table. All eyes will be on that man, Scotty Wynn, trying to become the first two-time champion since Johnny Chan. Recent winner Lee Watkinson hangs around and hangs around and is still around. Kenny Tran hoping his cash game prowess can catapult him to the top here. Havad Khan, the youngest player remaining at 22. And our unlikely chip leader is amateur Bill Spadia. Looking at our E-Trade financial chip count, the 60-year-old Spadia is the top dog. But five players over 10 million chips. Kenny Tran with about 7.5 million. The bottom nine, Lee Watkinson with about four and a half million. Scotty Wynn and Alex Kravchenko right now are the two short stacks. Euro pro Philip Helms made a name for himself here with aggressive play and his trademark stare. Helm joins Scotty at our featured table, as does his little green monkey card protector. What's your, what, what, uh, what is that? This what one. That, the monkey? It's my little green monkey. Oh, I have two. You have I two? I have two light, light one at home. Really? Yeah. Are they green as well? No, no. Jackpot, they're lucky. They're very small. How old are they? One years old. One years old. Yeah. Nice. Scotty does have two one-year-old Japanese monkeys at home. Philip Helm will start the action on the Milwaukee's Best Light Pocket Cam King Queen offsuit. Helm born in Denmark. His father's Polish. His mother's English. 300. Raise a 300. He's the World Series wrapped into one player. <laughs> He raises it to 300,000. Action on Scotty Wynn with pocket nines. Scotty's real first name is Thuan, T-H-U-A-N. Uh, the manager at a Las Vegas restaurant who hired him couldn't pronounce Thuan, so he just called him Scotty, and it stuck. And Scotty calls from the small blind. Big blind folds, and so Philip Helm, with that nasty stare of his, goes heads up against Scotty Wynn. The flop, 5-5-10, five, five, pocket nines are still good for Scotty. You know, I think Philip could sell that stare at Nordstrom's for like two ninety nine ninety five. dollars 95 Scotty checks with the best hand. And now Hilm. 400. Philip Hilm will make it 400000 to play. Well, he just doesn't stare. He stares, then bluffs. He loves moving chips into the pot. And Scotty's going to come along just with the call. Scotty says, I don't stare, but I will look you up. All right, turn card now is another nine, and Scotty Wynn turns a full house and earns the check mark. Scotty checks it. Going to see if Helm wants to drive the action again. Helm is drawing dead, as you mentioned. I'm all in. Wow, but he moves all in. Are you kidding me? <laughs> no. Well, Helm sticks his big foot into the trap, and Scotty's about to uh, have five million plus in front of him. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Scotty. He's doing some accounting here. I'm really not sure why. Let me see if it. It's for the rest of his chips, nine, but I, I, I thought this would have been a quick million. call. One nine. One. I call. And he does call, and that will mean an instant double up for oh, Scotty, Scotty Wynn. Yeah, yeah Philip Helm shows a reckless side, and Scotty Wynn cashes in. And just like that, the hometown hero back in it. He's got over five million chips. Yeah, baby. Yeah, you don't mess with Scotty, baby. So one of the big stacks doubles up one of the short stacks. And Scotty Wynn is that much more dangerous. Nice hand. Thank you, baby. Philip Helm was never ahead in that hand, and Scotty played him for as much as he could. The former champ is alive and kicking yet again. 
Norman, the main event's most exclusive club, has just four members, Moss, Brunson, Unger, and Chan. The only players to win it all more than once. Now another one of poker's all-time greats, Scotty Wynn is tantalizingly close to joining that pantheon of poker icons. We may never have a two-time champion again with the fields being so ridiculously large, but everything about Scotty Wynn says ridiculously large. His oversized personality, his life story, his pursuit of the American dream. And in his pursuit to become a two-time champion, I wouldn't bet against him. It's all good, baby. Just to poke the game. That's why the car's no limit, right, baby? That hard to win. If you leave your heart at home, you can't win. Isn't that a Tony Bennett song? <laughs> at table two, Lee Watkinson has his heart, soul, and all his chips riding on Ace King versus the pocket nines of Bill Spadia after the flop. So many times, Ace King is the final hand a player holds, and Lee Watkinson is facing that fate right now. He started this hand with seven million chips. They're all in the middle now with no pair. Turn card is a jack, no help, and established pro Watkinson may be down to his last card. Spady is still in control. Watkinson needs an ace or a king, or he is gone. The river card is the king! And Watkinson and his girlfriend, Timmy, love to see that river card. <laughs> yeah, he can keep his hood on a little longer. <laughs> oh, wow. Lee was sweating that one. Amateur Bill Spadia, though, wow. <laughs> lost a big chunk of his stack and lost the chip lead. And back at our feature table, the new chip leader, Lee Childs, involved in a hand right now. John Armbrust, who now holds ace king, re raised all in. Lee Childs with ace queen needs over three million to call. I call. And he does make the call to put the high school teacher at risk. And Arm Bruce, the teacher, has the former computer programmer dominated. Arm Bruce in great shape to stay alive and double up to over 10 million chips. Arm Bruce got help from 70 different people to cobble together his main event entry piece, where he's got a lot of people backing him. Let's suck out. Lee Childs looking for help. That is his dad, Bill, his emotional and financial backer. Put it just put it in the window. And now the flop. Seven Jack Deuce, all clubs. Close! Oh, what a huge flop for Childs picking up the flush draw. He's still behind. Red cards, too low red cards. Arm Bruce Ace King is still ahead, but now he's got to dodge a club on the turn and the river. Queen of clubs. All right, now the turn card. Arm Bruce all in, and there's another club! Childs wins the hand. Arm Bruce drawing dead and eliminated. Oh, Lee Watkinson's ace king came from behind to win. John Armbrust's ace king could not stay ahead, and he is gone. Armbrust earns $381,000. He says 10% of that will go to help build a school in Pakistan. Wrong read, but we got it. Wrong read, right result. Lee Childs over 16 million now, and the 17 remaining players are one step closer to the main event final table. The 2007 World Series of Poker is presented by Milwaukee's Best Light, your best bet for great taste. Miller Brewing Company, and in part by E-Trade. It's easy, it's extraordinary, it's E-Trade. And Harris Entertainment, pre-registered for next year's World Series of Poker now at worldseriesofpoker.com. Boss, Brunson, Unger, and Chan. Scotty Wynn trying to join that illustrious group as a multiple winner of the main event. He was on fire down the stretch in 1998, hoping to duplicate that here in 2007. All right, away from the featured table to table number two. Kenny Tran flopped a pair of tens and bet a half a million. John Kalmar check called the 500,000 with ace, eight of clubs, and a flush draw. There's already two million chips in the pot. Turn card now is a nine, and Kalmar adds a straight draw. And he checks it. Tran might be the cockiest guy in a room full of cocky guys. Kenny Tran is not going to give Kalmar any free cards. 1.3 million. 1.3. Cool. And he makes the call with two draws. Well, Tran bet two-thirds the size of the pot, and Kalmar getting about two and a half to one on his money. Does make the call line, as you say, with the flush and straight draws. River card is another club, and Kalmar hits his flush to earn the check mark. All in. And moves all in on Kenny Tran. Yeah, this would be for all of Kenny Tran's chips. Kenny does have top pair, but with flush and straight possibilities, this is a very tough decision. 
The average chip stack right now is about $8 million. If Tran folds here, he'd be left with $4.5 million. And, of course, if he calls, as we know, he would be gone. Why put you on pocket seven? A lot of people think Tran, along with Scotty Wynn, has the best chance to win this main event. His reading ability has been pristine most of this tournament. If it fails him now, he's going home. As you said, Norman Kenny has played solid poker, but Kalmar has him in a tight spot. Don't do it, Kenny. I call. But he does make the call. Yes, and John Kalmar wins the pot and eliminates the dangerous Kenny Tran. Tran had so many spectacular moments at this main event, but this last moment has got to sting. Great play with you. Tough call. Sorry, man. I was just, I need, I want to a call, man. You're a dangerous player. Okay, man. Kenny's instincts got him this far, but in the end, his final Kenny, one betrayed him. Pleasure. I wish we could play together longer. Is that Kenny? That's me. You're Kenny. Huh? No, 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 Kenny, you know Kenny. Kenny Tran? Kenny Tran. Kenny Tran. Yeah. He, he, got nine, he got nine million. I know. He had nine million. He's got zero million now. Zero million. And that is like a wake-up call to the remaining players. When someone like Kenny Tran can go out, they know it can happen to anyone. That was a lightning bolt that took Tran out. So now with Kenny Tran's elimination, John Kalmar, the chip leader, neck and neck with Lee Childs. Scotty went in ninth place with almost six million chips. Back to table two now, another big hand out there. Jerry Yang flopped a pair of aces, raised it to 1.6 million. Havad Kondo leads with two pair, re-raised all in. We're waiting for Yang's action. How much do you have left? Put the one million in. The social worker stands, the bulldozer counts. Slowly. Yang has Havad Khan covered. Yang started the hand with almost eight million. If I'm wrong, it's gonna cost me a lot of money. And if I'm right. If Yang calls here, we'd have another big pot, eight million plus with Khan's tournament at risk. Yang has been very confident in his reads. All right, I call. And Jerry Yang does make the call and put no, Khan at I risk. Compare. I just hope it's good, man. Yeah, Rain Khan ahead with the Kings and Queens. Hold! He said hold, line. <laughs> oh, I stopped here. All right. Come on, baby. Come In on. for all Come his on. chips. Turn card now is a five of diamonds. Khan still good. Yang can still knock out Khan with a river ace, six, or five. River card is an eight. Khan doubles up. I pulled it so long. Thank God. I wonder if he takes double A or triple A batteries. I play this game to win. I don't play to lose. Well, at least he got it out of his system. Oh, yeah. The World Series of Poker, presented by Milwaukee's Best Light. Main event. Back inside the Rio, it was not too long ago this room was wall-to-wall -wall poker. Now on the KFC Snacker Cam, you see just 14 players are left vying for a world championship and more than $8 million in first prize money. Ray Henson with 6-3 off suit. Henson just turned 29. His, his friend staked him the $10,000 entry fee as a birthday present. He's going to raise it to 340000 His biggest tournament cash before this was $13,000. He's blown by that. Scotty Wynn with a suited nine tray into the muck. This is like World War Three, baby. 14 players left, eight of them foreign-born. Philip Helm, suited Jack-10. Helm, a citizen of the world. He loves traveling everywhere. He makes the call of 340000 Raymond Rami from South Africa. Pocket eights from the small blind. And he will come into the pot, and David Tran, the big blind, gives it up. Three to the flop. Seven, ace, queen. Rami's eights are still best. I hope Helm likes looking at men, because at a poker table, that's pretty much all he gets to stare at. Rami checks, as does Henson. And Philip Helm checks as well. 
even stares at the dealer. A seven on the turn, pairs the board. Rami still leads. Maybe Rami's amused by Hilm's stare. Rami checks. Henson now drawing dead. That's what the zero percent is for. That is what the zero percent is for. And he still bets six hundred thousand. Well, I like that bet with the six tray. First of all, I believe Henson knows he's drawn dead, and second of all, everyone seems weak. Why not? They got Hilm out of the hand, who had a straight draw. See, got rid of one better hand. But ah, these sixty-two year olds are tougher to shake. <laughs> See, when you get that old line, you figure it might be your last hand ever, so you keep playing. <laughs> He's not that old. And Rami makes the call. All right, now the river card with Henson drawing dead. A nine of hearts. Rami first to act. And he checks it again. Rami checked the flop, the turn, and the river. Henson bet the turn. He can't give up now, can he? Well, he knows he can't win the hand unless he bets. Some people would wave a white flag at this point. No, he's going to wave pink chips, and 20 of them mean 1 million. I like that bet. Then again, I like Dukakis <laughs> in 88. Rami piecing the hand back together. Remember, Henson checked the flop, so Rami might figure the flop didn't help him at all. But Henson is fired away on the turn in the river with nothing. Rami just with a pair of eights, and there's a lot of cards that could beat him. Oh, cool. But he does make the call. Squad douche gets squashed. Wow. wow. Unbelievable. <laughs> Nobody can believe he made that call. A great call. Kenny Tran would say it was a sick call. <laughs> wow. No more messing around with him. Uh-uh. <laughs> no, he's got nothing. No, he's got nothing. Raymond Robbie takes down a nice pot. Good call. Raymond, Raymond. Here you go, baby. The Prince of Poker pays a tribute. And Rami collects years worth of respect for that play. Thank God he lied me. <laughs> <laughs> well, Raymond Rami may be the oldest player remaining in the tournament, but you'd be hard pressed to convince him. I think you're only as old as you feel. At the moment, I feel very, very young. Small oh, baby God. Yes, baby. I'll be 63 in October. I'm still a young man. <laughs> Until the last couple of years I started playing online, I actually didn't even know how to switch a computer on. I just get my grandchildren to open up a computer for me to run. Seven your baby! I just feel the age is an advantage if you are physically and mentally fit. Because I think you've got more wisdom and more uh, patience and you know, you've done, you've been through it. I think it's an advantage. Really I do. 95 champ Dan Harrington has said that no main event winner will be over 45 again. It's just too much of a grind. Rami says he's going to prove Harrington wrong. Raymond and his cheering section, including his wife, Teresa, traveled the more than 10,000 miles to Las Vegas for the main event. That's 16,000 kilometers, uh, Lon. <laughs> you are right. Philip Hilm, King Trey, offsuit from the small blind. Two players left in the field over the age of 45. Rami at 62 and Bill Spadia at 60. Hilm limped in. Rami with the 6-5. From the big blind, no raises, so he'll see a free flop. Rami and Hilm, heads up. Battle of the blinds. And the flop is Trey, 6 Trey. Hilm with trip, threes. Rami with two pair. Babies come out on that flop, and, and both of them have to figure they're ahead in the hand. Hilm, with the big lead, is going to bet out 120,000. And now Rami with the sixes and threes. We'll make the call. Cool. Turn card now. He is a deuce, and that gives Rami a straight draw, but Philip Helm still ahead. And Philip Helm way ahead. Check. Helm now checks it. Rami. Now he's going to figure his uh, sixes and trays are good now. 250,000. You know, this was a good read by Helm. You know, this time I think he checked, figuring he could induce Rami to bet. And now Philip Hilm. Race. Race. Says, I'm coming over the top. <laughs> and Philip Hilm's going to make it 750000 total. Actually, I thought Hilm might have gone hidey ho there. <laughs> all in? Yeah, but I think he wants a call and figures Rami wouldn't risk all his chips in this spot. But Rami oh. does put in the half million with the two pair and the straight draw. River card is a four, and Rami gets there, hitting a straight. Well, be careful what you wish for, Philip Helm. Rami hits it in the gut, and Helm's going to feel it. 
So now Philip Helm. Oh, this is a death march of chips he is lining up. How much does Philip Helm want to make it? He's going to make it a million and a half. Cool. And Rami calls right away. Helm's going to be shocked here. That was a value bet he was hoping would be called. And Philip Helm sees the bad news. Raymond Rami with another nice win. <laughs> We've created a South African senior citizen monster. <laughs> and another bow from Scott. Raymond's contingent sharing in his joy. You know, baby, I had to take my hat off, hat off for you. Boy, Scotty usually takes his hat off only when he showers. <laughs> you got to be lucky and good to win the main event. Right now, Rami's got both working for him. Welcome back to the Rio. He topped the leaderboard not too long ago, but fortunes changed for David Tran, and suddenly he's on the outside looking in, knocked out by Tuan Lam. He played well, but the striped shirt did him in. So on the Milwaukee's Best Light Tournament update, you see with 13 players remaining, pretty much an even split between foreign-born and U.S.-born players. And at table two, another America versus the world showdown. Massachusetts' own Bill Spadia all in with Ace King versus England's John Kalmar with pocket aces. Another ace king about to be swept out of here. Spadia has been a fixture on the leaderboard. The flop all oh, but does him in as Kalmar flops a full boat. Uh, that pretty much seals the deal. And the turn card does seal the deal. Kalmar takes the putt and eliminates Bill Spadia in 13th place. I couldn't do nothing with that. I had to go with that. And a great run as we lose the 60-year-old Spadia. One senior left, Raymond Romney. A heart attack kept Bill from entering the main event last year. We're glad he's healthy. The weight was worth $429,000 to him. John Kalmar still tops the E-Trade financial chip count. Tuan Lam close on his heels. Scotty Wynn with 7.5 million chips. Scotty now the second oldest player left here at 44 and easily the most accomplished left here. He, he's got to feel as if he can just reach out and take that second main event title. It's right in front of him. Blinds are up to 80 and 160,000. 20,000 chip ante from each player. Henson with pocket nines in the small blind. Limps in. Now Scotty in the big blind with King Queen. Scotty came to the U.S. at age 14 under a sponsorship program. He lasted exactly one winter in Chicago with his sponsor. He didn't like the cold, so he asked for a new sponsor. They moved him to a new family in Southern California. Smart play. And Scotty raises the action to 660,000. Raise it. And Henson, with a pocket nines, announces a re-raise. He puts in the call there. And he makes it 675,000 more. Aggressive back and forth between the blinds. Pre-flop, but no all-in. And Scotty makes the call. Scotty says, let's see a flop. It is a coin flip. The flop is king, 6-6. Six, six. Scotty pairs his king to take command. Henson, first to act. He checks. Scotty Wynn with kings up. Makes it 700,000. All in. And Henson moves all in. I call. And Scotty with an immediate call. This is the degree all in moment. Ray Henson all in and trailing Scotty Wynn, who barely has him covered. Yeah, Henson is all in. Scotty in a dominant position, but he has almost all his chips in the middle, too. Good luck, baby. Luck, what a huge hand this is. You either climb to among the chip leaders or you are out of here. A key moment in this tournament. And now the turn card. Eight of hearts. No help to Henson. I thought that was it. Henson thought he hit it. But he didn't. If Henson hits a nine, he'll all but wipe out Scotty Wynn. If there is no nine, Henson's main event is over. And now the river card. It's a seven. And Scotty Wynn earns the degree check mark. And knocks off Ray Henson in 12th place. Henson goes out with a great showing. And with 11 players left, Scotty Wynn's got to be thinking, two-time champion, baby. I like that. Hey. Congratulations. Good job. Get him, baby. I'm rooting for you. Get you another bracelet. Good, bracer. Good play, man. Get you another bracelet. You know. Next year, baby. Henson yeah. wins almost a half a million dollars, by far his biggest ever tournament cash. And now with 11 players left, 
Scotty win with 15 million chips and perhaps a reservation at the main event final table. The Degree All-In Movement is brought to you by Degree Men. More power than you need. One day you'll need it. The World Series of Poker, presented by Milwaukee's Best Light. Main event. Back inside the Rio Poker Room, electricity in the air. Crowd favorite Scotty Wynn has moved up to third in chips, poised to make his dream of winning a second main event a reality. On the Milwaukee's Best Light Pocket Camp, Ace Trey off suit from the small blind. Scotty's always been confident when he went to poker dealer school way back when. It was a six-week program, and Scotty says he was ready in two weeks. He raises it to 460000 Helm in the big blind, 8-5 of clubs. Helm does not lack for confidence either. He plays with a swagger at the table. And he makes the call. Queen, 8-4. Helm catches an 8 to take the lead. And Scotty whiffed on that flop. And he checks. Philip Helm with middle pair. Over the Measuring out his bet of 550000 Crazy. And Crazy. Scotty is going to bluff at it, Norman. That's quite an aggressive play from Scotty, who, who could just be cruising right now. Doesn't have to put himself in harm's way. Scotty is going to make it $1.55 million to play. Another million from Phillip is needed. Well, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he can get Helm to lay this down. Call. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, a good call from Helm. And Scotty says, oops, but you really can't hear it. Turn card now is another eight and trip eights for Philip Helm. Gives him the check mark. Check. Scotty checks, drawing dead. It's a good time to check. Both check. And Helm will not pull the trigger yet. A river card now. King of Clubs. Scotty Wynn has nothing. No, I hope he checks and then checks out. All right. Okay. Part one of the plan. He checks. Now Hilm. All in. And Philip Hilm moves all in. And that will end it. Scotty can only beat a bluff. And would Hilm risk his tournament here on a bluff? I don't think so. But Scotty's not going away. Well, Scotty can't call on. Um, this is just cheap dinner theater. Philip Helm can't sit still any longer. Well, Helm actually acting as if he's uneasy. Four million dollar grand total. <laughs> now, Scotty. It's all right. Leave it there. Ask it for a count. Scotty got him on a string. <laughs> and uh, Helm continues with his little act like, Ooh, I'm sweating this out. Scotty taking a long time to fold. Quite a lot of drama from these two players. Yeah, there's some gamesmanship here. Scotty with one last look. Yeah, and he does fold. Well, Scotty gives a couple of million away to Philip Hill when it's all said and done. And Hill does get that much stronger. Maybe he's making a case as the man to beat this year. <clears throat> Scotty is stressing me all up here. Can't even stack my chips now. Come and get some, come and get some more, baby. Uh, translation: Don't even try it, punk. <laughs> no around with me. Yeah. Scotty seems a little hot under the collar. If you double me up one more time, Scotty, we'll call it even for that full house. You got it, baby. Thank you. I like you, Scotty. If you sit still, I, I will double you up. So Helm with a bit of a rebate from that earlier loss to Scotty. Philip has impressed many with his confident run towards the final table. It's been a surprise to everyone except Philip himself. Three weeks ago, there was a newspaper article about me in Denmark, and the headline was, Philip Helm, I'm going to win the main event. Yeah, I said that. I had a good feeling all the way. I've been looking forward to this particular tournament for months and preparing for it mentally and everything. Someone has to be lucky today. I'm all in. I'm willing to risk my whole tournament on just making one play if I think it's the right thing to do. You did it the last time, I'm not sure you'll do it this time. I know that lots of the old schoolers say like, don't play the big parts, don't, don't take too many chances. Well, I don't want to do that. Oh. I don't mind going broke. That's not what I'm worried about. I'm worried about how to maximize the amount of chips I can get. 
I'm in the moment. I play poker. I play to win. Three weeks ago, Lon, you said Roland DeWolf was going to win the main event. What happened to that? I didn't see him go out, but I think your pick, Phil Ivey, was already waiting for him in the coffee shop. Phil who? I got Scotty Wynn right now. He's my pick. <laughs> Can't do that. All right, on the KFC Snacker Cam, you see table two, where John Kalmar has just flopped a pair of jacks, but it is second best to the two pair held by Havad Khan. When you're around Havad, it always feels like the calm before the storm. Turn card now is a blank. And Khan's king's up, still good. And he checks quietly. Checks good. Well, Havad acts like a maniac, but as we've told you before, he plays pretty solid poker. And now a king on the river. Khan improves to a full house. And I don't see Khan being quiet here. And three million. That's three million. It's like three million into that tiny little pot. Yeah, he, he overbets the pot. Cool. And Kalmar oh, makes the call and will kiss Thanks, those Wayne. chips goodbye. Nice uh, remember that stuff I said earlier about getting it out of his system? <laughs> he can't find his cheering section. I think Havad has uh, mistaken the Rio for a WWE ring. <laughs> there they are. Very nice, Ant. I should have set you in pre So with that win, Havad Khan now moves up to 8.6 million chips. Havad trying to become the youngest main event winner ever at 22. All right, let's go back to our featured table where a flop of Jack King Trey gave Scotty Wynn a pair of jacks, which is best right now. Juan Lamb collected an up and down straight draw, and he is first to act. I'm surprised Scotty even came into this pot from the big blind with Jack 8. He's got final table chips to sit on. The battle of Vietnamese, baby. <laughs> <laughs> the good looking one win. No, I'm in the booth. <laughs> Plus, I've never even been to Vietnam. Both Scotty and Tuan born in Vietnam. Tuan lives in Canada. Scotty here in Las Vegas. Lamb checks. Lamb got into poker because he knew a casino owner who asked him to become a dealer. The first couple of years, all the money Lamb made dealing, he would lose back playing poker. He's come a long way. And Scotty is going to make it 500000 to stay in this hand. Twan Lamb raise. with a straight draw says, I'm going to crank the action a little higher. Juan Lamb makes it one and a half million total. On the semi bluff. So Scotty right now just under what will be the chip average at the final table. He doesn't have to get in too deep, but he does make the call. Uh, he is getting a bit more involved than I thought he might at this point. No reason to put these chips at risk. All right, turn card now is another Jack and trip Jacks for Scotty. I guess he knows better than we do. Oh, well, he's still at a risk, but now he's in great shape with that turn card. I've got two million. Juan Lamb, though, is going to keep the heat on. He's going to make it two million now. Two million on the semi bluff. And, and Scotty laying off the hard stuff today. But he's got to be concerned. Lamb raised pre flop and then check raised on the flop as well. Scotty's standing up. Is he getting busy? Stands up as he puts his chips in. Makes the call. Makes the call. I wonder if you learned that from uh, Jerry Yang. <laughs> Maybe so. All right, so Lamb way behind. Needs help here on the river. But it is a <laughs> blank, and Scotty Wynn now earns the check mark. Lamb slows down. Lamb misses, and he surrenders. And that's got to be a signal to Scotty. And two million now back from Scotty Wynn. No, well, Scotty could have bet two wooden nickels there, and I don't think Lamb could call. And Twan Lamb does surrender. Yeah. <laughs> Lamb tried to school the master. Uh uh. It's a good looking one, one up. That's right, Eddie. <laughs> You want to dance? We dance some more. Scotty will dance with or without music. More money for the wife, baby. So what he shipped to him earlier comes back double from Lamb. He could coast to the final table, but it's full speed ahead for the Prince of Poker. You're probably going to be all over, baby. 
I call. We did it, man! Having been there before and holding close to what the chip average will be at the start of the final table, Scotty could go home, rest up, and come back as the clear favorite to win it all again. Scotty first to act, looks at ace queen off suit. Let's go, baby. I need to double up. Thank you, Scotty. Give me some action, please. From the spa blind, he makes it 530,000 to play. How much? I give you all action you need, baby. You're so kind, Scotty. Scotty actually doesn't need to give action at this point. He's got enough chips to, to go to the final table as a force. Pocket fives for Philip Helm in the big blind. Helm with the advantage of having position on Scotty all day. And the little green monkey. <laughs> Two have tangoed. I call. And Hill wants to tango again with the pocket fives. Again, a battle of the blinds, and they both are chip healthy. A small pocket pair against two overcards, pretty much a coin flip. Hill's Danish poker playing buddies looking on nearby. And now the flop is queen five, six, a set of fives for Philip Hill. And that is trouble with a capital T for Scotty, who has top pair, top kicker. And if I'm Scotty, at this point, I'd ask Philip Helm for an engagement ring. I mean, he's looked at Scotty enough to make a commitment. <laughs> now we know your standards for marriage. <laughs> Scotty with a bet of 600000 Helm call. with the set. Just call. makes the call. Remember, Scotty here, top call. pair, top kicker, and little chance. <clears throat> All right, so... Helm with a huge advantage to the turn. A king gives Helm the check mark. Scotty cannot win this hand unless he pushes Philip off it. And he checks. Helm could wait or he could push right here. He's going to put out 1.2 million chips. Remember, Scotty is drawing dead. He started the hand with about 11 million chips. He could fold and still coast his way to the final table. Come on. Scotty moves all in. I call. And with Hill's call, the hand is over. Oh, my goodness. What a misstep from Scotty Wynn. Boy, this is the second time today Scotty has misread Philip Hill. Last time it cost him only 2 million chips. This time it'll cost a lot more. Oh, what an amazing turn of events here. Scotty no longer in that comfort zone. Philip Helm now is in a very comfortable spot. Philip Helm with over 16 million chips, and look at that. A huge portion of Scotty's stack going over to the Danish pro. It's nothing personal, Scotty. I'm just happy to win. That's all. Just the game, man. Just the game. Yeah, it is. Four, five, six. Boy, look at that load of chips Scotty has got to send over to Philip Hill. Almost 8 million. Not same flip. And now Scotty is going to be down to maybe 3 million plus, and he is just feeling the effects of that blow. The Prince is more like a popper now with a lot of ground to make up. And it's Philip Hill who hands Scotty a devastating blow to his main event chances. Over to table two and pre-flop action. Jerry Yang moved all in with nearly three million chips holding pocket eights. He was called down by Alex Kravchenko with King Queen of Diamonds. 50-50. I didn't expect him to, to have a hand. <laughs> Yang indeed does have a hand and he is all in. The flop is 9-6-6. Yang's pocket eights still in the lead. Kravchenko will sit down and, and hope for a king or a queen to pop up here. <clears throat> Turn card is a 10, and Kravchenko does pick up a straight draw, which would beat Yang. Now more cards for Yang to dodge. Kravchenko can knock out Yang with a king, queen, or a jack for a straight. It's an ace! Yes! Yes! Yeah! <laughs> and the pocket eights double up Jerry Yang. Yes! Sort of a mini Havad Khan celebration there. <laughs> a bit of a stumble for Alex Kravchenko. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you. Yang is very devout and also looks for luck from the family photo he brings along with him. I'm not sure those are his children. That photo may have come with a friend. <laughs> Eleven players remain in this main event. Back to the featured table where Scotty Wynn just had his foundation rocked by Philip Helm. Scotty gave up most of his stack to the dashing Euro Pro. Scotty looks to be in quite a dour mood. Helm with King Queen offsuit. 
reaching for chips. He's going to raise it up to 480,000. Twan Lamb gives it up. On the short table, back to Scotty Wynn with 10-9 of clubs. In the big blind. Scotty needs 320,000 to call. 480, baby. Boy, even his baby doesn't have any bang. So it's you and me again, Scotty. Good luck. Good luck to you too, man. Scotty knows he could get healthy again if he can hit the flop. All right, here we go. The flop is Trey King seven, and Hill pairs his king. Scotty picks up a flush draw. Nine. Wow, and Scotty moves all in. I call. And a call from Philip Hill. This could be it for Scotty win. What a turnaround. Scotty pushes all in on just a draw, and his main event could be over in a heartbeat. Good luck, Scotty. I'm stunned, Lon. It didn't seem that long ago that Scotty was blowing kisses to the crowd, and now he's about to kiss it goodbye. At one point tonight, he had over 17 million chips and was strolling to the final table. Philip Helm is sitting pretty. Scotty wins, sitting on death row. Yeah, a complete meltdown of monumental proportions would take place if he doesn't hit a club. A deuce of hearts on the turn moves Scotty closer to the exit. Boy, Scotty win in the throes of an unseemly blow-up. And the once cocky former champion now just looks tired and ready to accept his demise. Well, Scotty Wynn could be down to his last card. He needs a club and a club only, or his pursuit of a second main event title will be over. And now the river card is a queen of spades, and that will do it. Hill wins the pot, and Scotty Wynn is gone in 11th place. Hill knocked him down and then knocked him out. Wow. Everyone in this Rio poker room is in shock. A couple of big missteps by the Prince of Poker, and he is swept out of here short of the final table. Philip Helm celebrates his riches while Scotty Wynn walks a lonely, painful path. The 2007 World Series of Poker is presented by Milwaukee's Best Light, your best bet for great taste. Miller Brewing Company, and in part by Degree Men, more power than you need, one day you'll need it. And the Rio All Suite Hotel and Casino, home of the 2007 World Series of Poker. Welcome back inside the Rio Poker Room. Ten players remaining now in the main event, and all of them have come to the featured table. But the one man everyone expected to be there is missing, Scotty Wynn. This is a good lesson for, for me, you know? When you're doing good, you're playing good, and then you get cocky and too confident, didn't give no player no, no, no credit, you know? That's, that's what happened, you know? I'm not gonna take nothing away from all this player. I, I get so disappointed at myself. I get so angry at myself. Just want to get out of here and go home and um, that's it, man. I can't believe Scotty's not going to be at the final table. And when he thinks about it more, he's going to be even angrier at himself. So with 10 players left, it is a three-man race for the lead. Hilm, Lamb, and Kalmar. The short stack at the table right now is Steven Garfinkel. Is the target on my back big enough? <laughs> and the history professor from Western Washington University knows he might be the man everybody's gunning for. History professor. How did a nice academic like this get this far against all these rough and tumble types? <laughs> Garfinkel with ace tray off suit. All in. And oh. he's going to move his three and a half million chips in. into the pot. Thank you. So Garfinkel all, all in. Folds. Raymond Rami. From the small blind. 30. With pocket queens. Cool. And he oh. does make the call to put Garfinkel at risk. Big blind still to act, but Kravchenko folds it. And so now, Rami with a chance to bring us down to our final nine players. Well, we're going to lose another American here. This yes. isn't good. There ain't many left. Garfinkel all in and way behind. And now the flop. And there's a queen, a set for Rami. Garfinkel with a straight draw. Did you fold the 10? You sit there the whole month. I know, I want the board. Anybody fold the 10? I folded a 10 playing video poker this morning. <laughs> you can do it. Jack King. 
<laughs> Jack Queen King. Peter Cooper. All right, now the turn card. <laughs> to end it. Let's see the turn card. It is a six of hearts. No help to Garfield. Nobody's got hearts. It's fine. Rami likes it a lot. Baby card. Only a small card. Small little baby. Garfinkel needs a 10, or his main event ends one Small spot baby. short of the final Small table. Baby. The river card Yay! is a deuce, and that's going to do it. Garfinkel gone in 10th place. Done in by Raymond Robbie. And we do have the nine men who will sit at the 2007 World Series of Poker Championship table. Is that an oi, oi, oi thing? <laughs> South Africa's version. Congratulations to the final nine. Over 6,300 players came with dreams of fame and fortune. Now after days of elation and heartbreak, we're down to the last nine. And what a nine it is. Two bracelet winners along with a group of confident newcomers, each looking to become the new face of poker by capturing the game's greatest prize. <laughs> The main event gold bracelet and eight and a quarter million dollars are up for grabs. For Norman Chad, I'm Lon McCarran. We'll see you next time from the final table.